Okay, guys, this is a, um, a good case, a good exam case. Uh, this is a gentleman who's now two year, coming up for th two years following an gun infraclavicular gunshot uh, wound to the right brachial plexus. So if we just focus on down here. So um, um, often in the exam, the guys uh, are asked to examine the brachial plexus and they start talking about C5, C6, C7, C8, etc. When it's an infraclavicular plexus injury, you need to think in terms of the nerves and then work backwards to look at the cords. So if you look at this gentleman, um, he's got, uh, push your arm straight, he's got fairly good triceps, but very weak, he's got no wrist extension, no finger extension, no thumb extension, so his, po his radial nerve, but going backwards, his posterior cord is completely uh, down. He, he, he does have a deltoid, and um, he does have... Uh, uh, more proximal to the uh, axillary nerve, but everything downstream from the axillary nerve is, is off. So it's a posterior cord injury distal to the axillary nerve. Then looking at the um, ulnar nerve um, and really looking at the medial cord. Remember the medial cord gives off the ulnar nerve and the medial limb of the medial nerve. So the ulnar nerve is fine, it's difficult to examine, but you can see, just push out that way. You can see his intrinsics are working and he doesn't make your fingers straight as much as you can. He doesn't have much of a claw, but that is difficult because he doesn't have his um, ulnar intrinsics. Uh, he doesn't have his uh, long extensors. Push out this way with your little finger. I can feel that this muscle is contracting, so his, his ulnar intrinsics are fine. Um, so the problem is turnover. He's got limited passive supination and obviously severe limitation of passive extension of the wrist, and that's just due to not wearing his splint adequately and not uh, intensive physio right at the upstart. Looking at the uh, uh, lateral cord, remember the lateral cord will continue as the muscular cutaneous nerve. Bend, bend your arm for me. It's not bad. Um, and then it gives off the lateral limb of the median nerve, which sends fibers down to the median nerve. And in those fibers are sensation, which he actually has some protective sensation. And then it's pronated teres. Turn your arm over. Very strong pronated teres. Uh, bend, bend your... Bend your uh, and then it's got pronated teres, FCR, bend your, bend your wrist towards your face, very strong FCR, and then it's got the sensory fiber. So that's what goes down the lateral limb of the median nerve. So um, once again, lateral cord, muscular cutaneous nerve, lateral cord, muscular cutaneous nerve, lateral limb of median nerve. In that lateral limb of the median nerve is FCR and pronated teres, and then you get the medial cord, medial limb of the median nerve, which has got all the long flexes, pull against me, He's got strong flexion and bend your thumb and he's got strong FPL. So the medial cord is intact. The medial intrinsics are intact and, um, and even the thenar intrinsics are intact. Uh, the ulnar nerve and medial nerve intrinsics are intact. So this is a, lateral, a partial lateral cord but mostly, mostly a posterior cord injury. In terms of reconstruction, obviously we would love to be able to do a wrist extension tendon transfer using pronated teres to uh, one of the wrist extensors, ECRB, uh, uh, but the problem with this gentleman is he's got no passive extension, uh, and then we would take his FCR, because his FCU and FCR are working, and put them into these finger extensors uh, and or the thumb extensor, but the problem with this gentleman, unfortunately, he has lost his passive range of motion. He's got no passive extension beyond that, uh, and really, the only option is going to be a wrist Fusion. However, the problem with the wrist fusion is we can then still use the wrist flexor, FCR, to the EDCs, but he loses the tenodesis effect, and that makes it a much less effective tendon transfer. But I do think it's the only option we've got. We've been trying for six months or a year now to restore his passive range of uh, wrist extension, and we, we, we cannot win with physiotherapy. So it's come to the point that we can't leave him like that. We're going to have to do a wrist fusion. It's a much, much less desirable option, but it's the only option we've got.